I may have spoken here before about one of my guilty pleasures of the past, which was watching the Antiques Roadshow. Uh, you never know what's going to turn up. There's some really interesting things people have hiding in their houses. And occasionally you find somebody who appears to be genuinely interested in the object and what it is and its history. But more often you can see that they're just passing time until they get to the point where they can find out what the thing is worth. And the, the guilty pleasure, of course, is to see that the look of, of feigned surprise and, and avarice that comes over people when they discover that grandma's china is really worth $200,000 or whatever it turns out to be. It's not a really an ideal system, but it certainly is the one the world uses the most to decide what things are worth. I can remember reading something by some economist a few years ago who said that eBay is the world's perfect economy. It's the perfect way of deciding what things are worth. If everything is put up for auction in a completely, in theory, frictionless way, where anybody can bid whatever they want to without any interference, will know what something is really worth by what someone was willing to pay for it. That is how the world decides what things are worth. How much would you pay for it? You may remember that in my sermon on the fifth Sunday of Lent, I talked about how in the Gospel of John, the, the events of Holy Week, all of the events, but particularly the crucifixion, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, is God's judgment of the systems of this world the ways that we set up our systems of, of valuation, the way that we deal with one another. And so for tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday noon, I want to talk a little about some of these valuations because this is a good example of one in the story we have tonight, this little strange little dinner party happening just at the beginning of Holy Week. Certainly, we are used to imagining things as having worth in terms of what we can do with them. Uh, there's a joke, uh, are you a man has a heart attack, and the EMS people come and they put him on a stretcher and they ask, are you comfortable? And he responds, I make a good living. Uh, every time I log into the app, mobile app for my banking, bank account now, it's, it's changed, and they got a new, system, a new system they use. At the top, there's something that says net worth. Now, of course, it's not really true because my one bank account has no idea what's in any one of my other bank accounts. It doesn't know what, what debts or other assets I may have anywhere else. But right there in front of me is my net worth expressed in terms of dollars. We have a way of doing this to ourselves again and again and again. If it's a bad system when it comes to objects, it's a far worse system when it comes to people when we try to reduce people to their dollar value, what are you worth? We run the risk of running afoul of God's system of valuation. If we can leave aside for a moment the fact that it appears that Judas was dishonest, at least in the opinion of the writer of the Gospel of John, in a way he is speaking for the world, and he does kind of have a point. We who are faithful people must live in the world and must work on the world's terms in order to get God's business done. So he's not wrong that the perfume was worth a lot of money. The, tr the trouble is that his way of valuing it is up against God's way of valuing it as expressed by Mary Magdalene, who has poured it out, or, or Mary, the, the sister of Martha, who has poured it out for this purpose, the worship of God, the honor of God, this person who she, for some reason, seems to know will not be around much longer. And so she is honoring while she has the chance. The death of Jesus reveals just how little the world's system of valuation means in the eyes of God. This one relatively marginal person in a relatively marginal culture on the edge of the Roman Empire, who nonetheless was the full embodiment of God's purposes for humanity. His death reveals how much of the world's system of worth is really very hollow. The question for us as we begin Holy Week is whose system of valuation will we follow? Will we be distracted and enticed by the world's way of saying what something is worth? 
by imagining how our worth is reflected in what we see of the world in ourselves? Or will we turn and see it as God sees it? That that which is worshipful, that which is beautiful, that which is truly loving in an intimate way, our presence in God's, our being right there in God's presence is of so much greater value. As we go through this week, one of the things we discover is how little we actually have to offer, how little it is we can do in the face of what it is God is doing around us in the events that we hear about this week. Tiny little things we do, like wash each other's feet, feed each other soup, support each other as we approach the cross on Good Friday. And yet those things are of far greater value than anything else of the worlds that we might throw at Jesus' feet today. So let us think today, tomorrow, Wednesday, all through this week, about where we are placing our sense of value how we are evaluating what it is that God does for us, in us, through us, even despite us in this world. Perhaps come to see ourselves and the work of God in a new light and with a new value. Amen.